Is Arzani maybe a late chance here for City? Daniel Arzani, what a goal! Everything just seemed to be going really well for me at that time. Arzani! I knew I always had it in me to play at that level and to play that well. So for me, it kind of just felt like I was finally getting the recognition on a bigger stage for what I'd been doing for a while. And this bright young prospect is on the scoreboard. A big moment. Daniel Arzani, the 19-year-old, makes his Socceroos debut. You're doing really well and you're shooting for the sky. You know, you, you don't know what's going to happen in the next few years, but you know that you feel that you're where you deserve to be and you think you can always get higher, of course. And you dream. I wanted to go on the pitch and I wanted to have a cracker debut and I wanted to work my way into the squad. That was the plan for me. I was finally getting a little bit of recognition from the coach and we were on good terms and um, he gave me my chance to play. Yeah, the young boy just looks as if he wants to have a go every time he's got the ball. It's... Getting the thumbs up there from his manager. And he's taking a knock and he's down and he's holding his hamstring and he's hitting the ground and this does not look good for Arzani. Well, we've just been speaking so highly of him. I remember arguing with the physio. Um, he was telling me that I've definitely done something serious to my knee and I was like, no chance. For me, when it clicked that it was serious was when I actually got the results back from the scan and they're like, it's 100% an ACL. There's no wiggle room. So I kind of needed to hear the, the, that straight up and the tough way because I, I had a hard time accepting it. Being injured for a footballer is a struggle. Everything that you dream of and your passion gets taken away from you and you suddenly have no purpose. I've had four major injuries, I would say. So two ACLs, a grade two hamstring tendon that was also very complicated, a six monther, and a Achilles tendon rupture. So it's not a great track record, but have managed to come back from all of them. There's not really a word that encapsulates what the Matildas means to you when, when you spend half your life being one. <laughs> it just, it, it is you, it's your identity. I think playing at a home World Cup would have been the pinnacle of my career and unfortunately missed that one. I ruptured my left Achilles in March last year, so that's 10 months ago. Uh, 16 weeks until the World Cup. It was just a typical day at training and I went to sprint after a ball and I knew straight away what I'd done. Um, actually, I didn't. I, it took me about three seconds. It probably took me a couple of days to really think about scenario and I was really strong in, in not pushing for it, doing the right thing, taking my time with the rehab, not trying to, to push through. I knew if I went into trying to go to that World Cup not at 100%, I wouldn't have done a service to the team. So I decided just to put it in the bin and focus on something else. The toughest thing is, for me personally, was not feeling like I was a footballer anymore. I was just in the gym, in the physio room. I didn't even see the pitch for like five months. I'm all the way on the other side of the world. I'm 19. I've moved here to play football. It's all I've known my whole life. It's all I've done. And I'm not getting a chance to do it at all. And you see your friends, they're going out on the pitch every day, they're playing, they're playing well, you're seeing everyone succeed and you're not even getting a chance. I had a couple of unsuccessful loan moves and things weren't going to plan and I just felt like I was beating my head against the brick wall because I was working so hard and trying so hard to make things happen but it just wasn't falling into place. And I think you always get those moments of self-doubt. When things aren't going well, people tend to isolate themselves, which is what I did as well. Outside of what's going wrong, you have to also be able to communicate with those close, closest to you and like be able to talk to them and open up to them about how you're feeling and also having that like shoulder to <laughs> shoulder to cry on I guess keeping those people close to you in the loop with what's going on and relying on them and having them there that's what they're there for to support you so I think isolating yourself is the worst thing you can do rehab isn't a linear line like you you're never rehabbing like this it's a couple of good weeks and then a dip and then a couple of good weeks and a dip and my second knee injury I went through a long period not being able to walk and I think at that point I was like Jesus who cares about football I just want to be a functional human being but that was probably the point that I felt like that was maybe the end of the road two-year knee rehab during COVID stuck in a foreign country uh, I learned to write the psychologist got me to 
really tap into deeper thoughts about what was going on and be able to process all of the emotions, all the thoughts, be able to look at them logically and then we could work through them together as well. So I think being able to write was probably the key. Now, Arzani, promising position and that's how it's done. I think early on in the season, my first season back, um, I really found that spark again and I was loving it and really enjoying it and then it kind of died away. But I've, I've really found it here. For me now, I'm at a point where I've trained my body to, to kind of be almost back to where it was before. I think we've just got a really, like we've got a really good group of lads and everyone really likes each other. We, we enjoy spending time with each other outside of the field as well. And for me, I think that's really important, you know, away from the football pitch, you know, going out for team dinners, doing stuff like that. I think that helps the, the group bond a lot. And yeah, I just, I love all the boys. It's, it's, it's really a great group. Azani shoots and Azani scores! It's not individual, it's not about the individual, it's about everyone and everyone's willing to make sacrifices for the team. So like sometimes I get caught out of position and Bruno will run 40 metres for me and cover me or something happens with Zizou and I'll sprint in 30 yards to cover for him, it doesn't matter. Like everyone's willing to work for each other and everyone's willing to make sacrifices for the greater good. And I think that's what really separates us this season. He doesn't have the crowd behind him, Arzani. His booze ring around the stadium. He silences them with a goal. I think anything that happens in life, whether it's negative or positive, there's always lessons to be taken away from it. Obviously, you'd prefer to learn lessons in, a, in an easier way, but yeah, for sure, in every situation in life, I think there's something to take away from it. That's fallen kindly to Lowe, who looks to help that onto into the middle of the box. Here's Wynett. Our campaign has probably reflected what a rehab looks like, to be honest. A beating heart. <laughs> you know, this this way, as long as towards the end of the season we end up somewhere up there, um, I think it will be in good stead. I mean, one of my favourite quotes is, you can't change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails. So it's just about that. Being able to pivot, being flexible, being adaptable, so everything isn't going to go your way, everything won't go to plan. but just being able to adjust and make sure the trajectory is upwards all the time.